stand with me as we sing together? morning yes we're turned on I got to figure out how to do this and not drop it in the water right <laughs> I got a preferably yes from over here it is a joy indeed to come here this morning and to begin as we walk through the baptismal waters this day it is an exciting day indeed can I get a great big amen amen, amen. as we here from the word of the Lord is found in Matthew and 3. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. For this is he who was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah when he said, The voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region about the Jordan were going out to him. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water and behold the heavens were open to him and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. May we rejoice this day, as our Lord says, This is my beloved Son, this is my beloved daughter, with whom I am well pleased. I got a little full this time, didn't I? It's high in here. That's good. Wow. 
Gavin, what profession do you come making today? Jesus is Lord. Then I baptize you, my brother, in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yes. Then I baptize you, my sister in Christ, in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Yes. And I baptize you, my sister in Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that a great way to kick off service? Amen. Boy, I tell you, you know, you do birthdays, anniversaries, wedding, and everything, but when, when you know there's another, there's three more souls for God there. Amen. Boy. Well, welcome everyone this morning. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for being here this morning. Let's open with prayer. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, it's so good to be in your house today to witness this bapti these baptisms this morning, dear Heavenly Father. We're so overwhelmed with joy. We know our jobs that we have to do with these three young people. I, asked, uh, I pray for them, but also pray for this congregation that we give them the love and understanding, the knowledge that we have to part upon them. That as they grow with you, we also grow, dear Heavenly Father, and we thank you for that. We thank you for being in this house this morning to praise you, to study your word, and to go forth and spread the word. In your name we pray. Amen. Announcements. Uh, we had 39 members present in Sunday school this morning. Remember your tithes and offerings this morning. Uh, the Hardy Lake outing was canceled uh, due to the uh, funeral for uh, Jeannie Draper. That's Jimmy's sister. will be this afternoon. So that's canceled. Uh, we've got copies of the new 22-23 budget and the nominating committee reports and uh, in the podium in the foyer. They will be out there through today. Now, if you need one, you can, uh, uh, and you haven't yet. Uh, also, the, the newsletters and the Coffee Creek Association Shepherd are in the boxes out there. Um, Wednesday night, there will be uh, no service here Wednesday night at the church. We have the year in bash at Pastor Tyler and Liz in Scottsburg from 6 to 8. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board uh, to what you may bring. They also have uh, hot dogs and watermelon. Ooh. Saturday, we'll have the youth uh, going to the week uh, along Crystal Lights in Brown County. Keep them in your prayers. And also, Operation Christmas, a child this month for September, uh, colored pencils down here in the bottom here. So, that's announcements. Uh, I'm also going to do the prayer concerns, but... I want to share with you something before uh, a little, I have a friend who's a pastor in Alabama, and uh, he told me uh, something that happened to him. You, you just, you know, it's, it's funny how sometimes you just see 
God just wink at you every once in a while in, in the things that we do, the, the little things that happen. He was invited to a family dinner. Uh, the family, uh, the gentleman and his wife, they were in their late 70s, and he was a deacon at the church, and Alzheimer's was uh, overtaking him, and uh, it was just a sad thing. And uh, he was invited to dinner with the family, and uh, they had a, a daughter and two sons and the grandchildren. They all came as a family dinner. So a friend of mine was invited, so he thought nothing. He said, well, I'll just meet with them and stuff. And, uh, and I think his name was Brother Bill, they called him, the older gentleman. And he sat at the table, and he just remember, in the middle of the table was a big bowl of macaroni and cheese. Macaroni and cheese. Well, he, never, he didn't think nothing of it, and then uh, they brought the other fixings, and he said it was a fine meal. But he noticed that Brother Bill, in his condition, he, he, was, he had a bib on, kind of slumped over the table, and he just sat there and ate macaroni and cheese. He loved macaroni and cheese. And uh, as it got into the meal, uh, the, the wife, she had had medical conditions also. And he realized why he was called to dinner there. There was discussion on what to do with her father. Decision to be made that he needed more care than what was, she was able to give him. Of course, her being a wife of so many years, she didn't want to give up that responsibility. She loved her husband. Well, the discussion among the kids was different. And the daughter was kind of emotional about it. And one of the sons became very irate and said, well, you know, mom's not in great health. You know, we need to have dad taken care of around the clock. And as he sat there, he said, Mr. Bill just kept eating, you know, didn't pay attention. He was in his own world there. And, and uh, the sister, the, the daughter and the son kind of got into an argument about it. And, this, and the daughter was very emotional. And she says, you know, that, uh, that he's been there and mom loves him and she's taking care of him. She goes, I'll help, I'll help. And the son says, no, it's not your responsibility. He says, he doesn't even, the son made the statement, Dad doesn't even know where he's at. He doesn't even know what's going on around him. And the minute uh, my friend sat there, and, and it was, uh, you know, a very disturbing moment, and he was asked, the question was asked, the son looked at the father and said, he doesn't even know who mom is. And the daughter looked at her dad and said, and tearful, and said, said, do you know who that is? And she pointed across the table where her mom was sitting. And his, her dad was sitting there eating his macaroni and cheese. And Jeff said he just kind of looked up at her and said, that's my girl, and went back. So we see God when we don't think we're going to see God. In those moments when we think we know everything and what's going on around us, it's still there. The Spirit's still there. And as we see these children this morning, baptism, and new Christians, we need to see that spirit there also, because God just winked at us. So we thank for that. Also this morning, I'm going to do the prayer concerns. So does anybody have any prayer concerns this morning? Louise Brock, okay. Paul and Marilyn Rogers. Okay, anyone else? Okay, okay. Prayers of praise. What do we got to be pray thankful about? Oh, there we go. Yep, the baptisms. Yeah. Anyone else? Pat? Amen. 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 Any other praises this morning? Yes. Oh. Okay, Xander. Okay.
Janice is back. <laughs> That's it. We can applaud. Yeah. Any others? Not. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we lift up those on our prayer concerns today. We've got many. Uh, we pray for Jimmy West, uh, the ta Eddie Taylor, uh, Paulette Meeks, Travis Marshall, Louise Brock, Paul and Marilyn. We also have unspoken requests, dear Heavenly Father, that we lift up to you. We lift up the families of the Knowles, the Silikowskis, the Andrews, the Brocks, Basham, Kennedy, and the Draper family, all in their time of sorrow, dear Heavenly Father. We, we pray for them. But also, dear Heavenly Father, we do have our praises this morning. Such a beautiful day. We pray that uh, Xander's doing fine. The baptisms today, we're so thankful for that. Angie's walking. The, the, the newest uh, year that we have, the new year that's coming on in the church year, we pray for those that are going to take those offices, dear Heavenly Father, that uh, you guide and, greet and direct them in, in what they need to do, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for being in your house today. In your name we pray. Amen. Please stand with us again as we sit.
of our three friends. God, that we just pray that you will light their life and just let them show your, the joy and the excitement that they have for you. Just protect them, God, and guide them in a way that only you can. God, that you heard the many prayer concerns, you know the ones that weren't even mentioned, the ones that are in our heart, the ones that we think nobody knows about. But God, we know that you love us enough to know about those little important things that are lost and forgotten. God, that there's no one lost. And God, that may each person here hear the word that's spoken, and may they just return their whole life to you. And if they don't know you, God, today's the day to say yes to you. God, we just thank you for Jesus and his, for his sacrifice so that we can join you in heaven someday. And in Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Let us turn our Bibles this morning, <clears throat> excuse me, to Colossians in the second chapter. And as we have been 
the last several weeks in Paul's letter to the Colossians and um, going through this, been reading through the um, ESV or English Standard Version uh, translation. And if you'll look in your bulletins this morning, you will find a sheet front and back with those scriptures on it if you'd like to follow with where I'm reading today. Colossians chapter 3, excuse me, Colossians chapter 2, beginning with the sixth verse. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. <clears throat> For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you, who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with his legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. There, these are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism and worship of angels, going on in detail about visions puffed up without reason by his sensuous mind, and not holding fast to the head from whom the whole body, nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments, grows with a growth that is from God. If with Christ you died to the elemental spirits of the world, why, as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to regulations, do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, referring to things that, are all, that all perish as they are used according to human precepts and teachings. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and asceticism and severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Amen. Remember your baptism. Well, it has been an interesting morning, or an interesting weekend, should I say. Uh, you can tell when you're trying to do something for God because Satan keeps uh, rearing his ugly head and trying to trip you up. I came over here last night to print off And about 9 o'clock, I was sitting messing around on the computer after I got it done. I should have been back home by this point in time. And then I realized something fairly important. I forgot to fill the baptistry. <laughs> ah! And there, it just kind of goes on from there. And it's been an interesting morning in so many ways I will not get into. Mornings like this, I need to remember whose I am whom I belong to. I belong to Jesus. Amen? I am not my own. I have been bought with a price. I have a Heavenly Father who loves me so much, far more than I can imagine or comprehend. And it's on days like this I remember my baptism. I was nine years old 
in April of 1972, I could see a few people already starting to just shake their head like youngin'. And there's other people like, that's the last century. <laughs> that day when I was excited to walk into the baptismal waters myself to proclaim that Jesus is Lord with what we were doing that day, I remember just like it was yesterday. When we read in Colossians in chapter 2 this morning, the apostle reminds us of our baptism. He reminds us that we are daily walking with Jesus Christ and we need to attune our minds to him constantly. It is exciting indeed to be baptized. Right, Gavin? Where are you, Gavin? <laughs> okay, of course. <laughs> as soon as I said it. <clears throat> it is exciting indeed at that moment. But that excitement seems to wear off after a while as we go through the regularity of the Christian walk in life. And we need to remember that excitement day in and day out. And Paul reminds us of these things in Colossians 2 today. When you look at verses 6 through 7, Therefore, as you receive Christ the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and built up in Him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Walk. We live in a world where we don't walk very much. It seems like run, run, run. We're constantly on the go. We cannot get to the next place quick enough. And then there's three more to get to after we leave there. But the Christian life is different. We talk about it as a walk. Dr. Spurgeon in his commentary says that there are four things suggested here by the word walk. First, life. We are to vitally enjoy the Lord Jesus. May we not run past Jesus and forget whom we serve, forget whom owns us. We are to enjoy life in Christ Jesus, and we are to give him the praise and the honor continuously. Amen? <clears throat> Excuse me. Continuance. We are to remain in Christ. We are to make Christ our constant place of daily movement and occupation. No matter what we do each and every day of life, Jesus is in it all. And we are to come to him first and foremost. Activity. Busy yourselves. Not with a new way of salvation. Work for Jesus. With him and obedience to him. We walk with Jesus Christ in our daily walk. And all that we do, we are walking with him and serving with him. And we are to progress, to advance. But always let our most advanced thought remain in Christ Jesus. We can never outgrow Jesus. In reality, the further we go, the more we learn about Christ Jesus in our lives. But we are not to be content with where we were but to continue to grow in Christ Jesus. You know, walk is a really good description here. The Christian life is for the long haul. The Christian life is not a race. It is not a sprint. It is not a one-day event. The Christian life is a continuous journey. The walk does not end at the baptismal waters. Baptism is not the completion of your Christian life. Baptism is only the beginning. We look down in verses 16 through 22, the large portion of the scripture today. We learn that baptism does not earn us our salvation. The Colossians was dealing with an early form of Gnosticism. And we've talked about this in some times past. It was a heresy that was based on secret knowledge. We know more than everybody else does, and you need to follow our way. And when we start to read there, Paul is getting on to them because they're getting lost in these trappings. 
Let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink and with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism and worship of angels. But go, going on in detail about visions puffed up without reason by their sensuous minds. The idea here is, is they're seeking to earn their salvation by the quality of knowledge that they can acquire. And Paul says it's not based on any of these things. Verse 23, these have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and asceticism, and severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. They might look like they can earn your salvation, but they do not. Even baptism itself does not earn our salvation. It is a sign and a symbol that we have accepted Jesus' free gift of salvation. Jesus Christ has done all the work for our salvation when he died upon a cross. We can't earn it. We receive it. And it is the most precious gift of them all. Why? Because it cost Jesus everything. Now, as I say all this, I don't want us to confuse growing in the Lord with our salvation because we are called to grow. In 2 Peter chapter 3, to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are to grow in Christ, not to be content with the faith that we had when we come into the baptismal waters, but with all that Christ has to show us in that daily walk. Verse, chapter 2 and verse 19 of Colossians, from whom the whole body grows as God causes it to grow. God is seeking to grow me and you in our Christian walk. We can't earn our salvation, but we can continue to go deeper into Jesus Christ. Let's go back to verses 13 and 15, and we learn that Christ does all the work. As we just mentioned a moment ago, Christ earned our salvation for us when he gave his life for each and every one of us upon a cross. Will we accept his free gift? Colossians 2, verses 13 through 15 is those fam um, familiar words, and you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. By canceling the record of debt that stood against us, we couldn't cancel that record of debt against us with his legal demands, this he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. You know, it's hard to let somebody else do something for us, is it not? We have been trained all our lives that we are to be self-sufficient. We are to take responsibility for ourselves. So when we start talking about the free gift of salvation in Jesus Christ, that's wonderful. I want that free gift. What do I do to earn that free gift? Do you hear what you're saying? That's the whole point. It's a free gift. You can't earn it. Jesus Christ has done all the work. Will you accept it? that free gift from him. As I talk with the baptismal candidates in preparing for baptism, I always share about uh, something I need them for them to do for me. Whatever you do, don't try to help me. <laughs> when you get there in the baptismal waters, let me do all the work. It's when you try to help me, like pull yourself up out of the water, that's when I'm almost going to drop you. If you will just let me do it, I will not drop you. Many years ago, I'm sure I've told this story before, we had this lady in our congregation who had accepted Christ, and she was a, a little larger lady, and she was kind of worried. She says, now, Pastor, are you going to be able to get me out of that water? I said, uh-huh. 
we can do it, don't worry about it. And she said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bigger than you are. I said, that's not a problem. I've baptized men who are larger than you. It's not a problem. Water has natural buoyancy. I will be able to pull you out. She goes, okay. You can tell that okay that she wasn't completely convinced. So the day came. And as I always tell the baptismal candidates, uh, no shoes, no socks, bare feet, you uh, you'll have better grip and you're less likely to trip and fall. And it's one of the exciting things because I can walk around the congregation on Sunday morning right around a baptism barefoot and nobody seems to care. It's like, yes, we got a baptism. Well, we got into the baptismal waters and everything was going perfect. I had done two other baptisms already that morning and she came in and I took her down into the water and the next thing I knew, she started sliding on me. And here I was like, ah! trying to catch up with her and keep a hold of her because she just kept moving. And, and I was having trouble at this point in time. And you know what was going on? Oh, you have nothing to worry about, honey. I will be able to take you out of the water. And I was like, <laughs> and I was working and struggling and I did not know what was going on. And I got her out of the water, praise God. <laughs> and she looked at me just like, and I was like, I feel so bad. I don't know what happened. I had no earthly idea. We go our separate places. Everybody gets dried off, gets redressed. And before we walk back into the sanctuary, she walks up to me and says, Pastor, I put some hand lotion on the bottom of my feet. Do you think that might have been the problem? I sure do, honey. That was butter. <laughs> Let me do the work. And that's hard in our self-sufficient world. We're supposed to do everything for ourselves. And Jesus says, no. I've done everything. You can't do anything except this free gift. And remember our baptism. Verses 11 and 12, the focal here today. In him also... You were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. And we see that symbol of baptism as we are buried with Christ in his death and we are risen to new life in Christ Jesus. It is exciting indeed. But when we talk about our baptism, I want you to remember, and all of us to remember, that we are making a connection with Jesus Christ. We are buried into his death. And a connection with fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. We who have followed Jesus Christ, who have accepted his gift of salvation, who've been faithful to him going through the baptismal waters, we have an experience that no one else seems to know what we're talking about. It is exciting indeed. I talked about here just a moment ago, way back in 1972 when I was baptized, and I know there's some who can go just a little further than that. Right, Doug? That's what I thought. <laughs> talking with Brother Jimmy this past week, Brother Jimmy West, and please be keeping Jimmy and all the family in your prayers, says his uh, sister has passed away this week. The funeral will be this afternoon, and he's the last one of the brothers and sisters. He's having a hard time, and I know he would appreciate your prayers. And we were talking about it, and I said, how old were you when you were baptized? Oh, I was about 12, and he told me who the pastor was and everything, and well, but he didn't fix that date. I went and looked it up. Uh, well, I, I got um, uh, Judy to look it up for me. Baptized on the 8th of April of 1944. That was before you were baptized, wasn't it, Doug? <laughs> 78 years ago. I suspect, can anybody do more than 78 years on their baptism? I didn't think so. I want you to remember your baptism whether it was a few moments ago, whether it was in 72, 44, or lots of other years in between. 
Remember your baptism. Remember that you were putting your life into someone else's hands. Just as we put our lives into the hands of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to remember that each and every day because there are days that Satan comes at us. And it gets difficult indeed. We need to remember that salvation, that, excuse me, that baptism did not save us. But it is a symbol of Christ working in us and his salvation that we have freely accepted. We have that to keep and carry with us each and every day. I always encourage everyone, when, uh, after the service today, come on up here and stick your hand in the waters and remember your baptism. It's real easy to do right now because I filled it a little too full, as the, the girls found out this morning. Uh, I was already down there trying to dry off and get dressed, and Pastor Tyler told me about how he just basically had to just kind of lift them up because there was no way that they could touch the water and have their mouths above the, uh, the, touch the floor and have their mouths above the water at the same time. So it's really good and full. So you're in good shape. Stick your hand in there and remember your baptism. Remember the promise of Christ Jesus in your life to never leave you nor forsake you. Remember the promise of the Holy Spirit to be resident each and every day of your lives. Remember that Christ did it all. It's all to him we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. Praise God, he washed it white as snow. We walk with Jesus Christ each and every day of our lives. Let us be faithful in that walk, remembering what Christ has done for us as we're reminded through baptismal waters that we might serve him and know him deeper each and every day of our lives. Walk is a good description of the Christian life. It's not about running as fast as we can. It's about joining Jesus on that walk each and every day. Let us be faithful and walk with him even today. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I pray that you have, but if you have not, what prevents you from doing that today? Jesus has already done the work. You can't earn it. You accept that gift. During this time of invitation, as our musicians come to lead us in song, let me ask you to come and say yes to him, taking that free gift from Jesus Christ, the gift that makes all the difference indeed. And we'll plan a baptism. And we'll go back into the baptismal waters. And you'll be able to remember your baptism as well. Let us stand as we join in song and sing together. Be faithful and say yes to however the Lord is leading you this morning. Don't put them off. Put them on. Jesus. 
just a moment as our three baptismal candidates will come to the front. Okay. Well, Gavin, all right, come on down. Miss Amanda in here? She walked out for a moment too. I know um, Gavin's excited. She made some shirts for him. Left in the water. He wasn't. But his old life and without Christ was left in the water. Amen? Amen. You always remember this date, won't you? 2022. Praise God indeed. And we're just kind of just kind of stand here and mumble along until the other until the two ladies get here, okay? Uh-huh. 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 <laughs> you want to get another picture of us? <laughs> and messed up that lens, didn't you? <laughs> oh my. <clears throat> oh, here they come. Yay! Come on down, you're the next contestants now. <laughs> All right. Let's see. You got a left in the water shirt and you got a what a friend we have in Jesus shirt. Oh, I like those shirts. Excellent. You have to go around showing them to everybody later, okay? Let's see here. What do we got here? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Like, Gavin, I have the privilege of presenting to you this certificate of baptism and obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ and the imitation of his example. Gavin Reed Sebastian was buried with him in baptism on the 28th day of August of 2022 by the Kimberlin Creek Baptist Church. Congratulations. Kenzie? You've got one saying the same thing, except it's got your name on the 28th of August, 2022. And Kinsley, you also have one as well that says the same thing, but with your name on it. So congratulations to each of you. And, ta -da. and Pastor Tyler, you want to come up here? Yeah, hold it up, yeah. But not in front of your face. <laughs> in front of Pastor Tim's is okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that y'all are excited and want to just congratulate them and what have you. Pastor Tyler, why you're just won't you grab these three and just walk on up to the front then? Do we have a testimony this morning? Someone who wants to praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to do birthdays in just a moment. But first, does somebody want to testify to the Lord Jesus Christ? How he has made the difference in your life. I was baptized in 1945. 1945. And the Lord has led me all my life. And the Lord has led you all your life. Praise God. Praise him for it. Amen, amen. Amen. We have another word of testimony this morning. But speak loud. Use that preaching voice.
Come on up here. No one's going to be. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to, though. Come here. Come here. Come here. I'm having a hard time hearing you. <laughs> no, I want to praise God. You went on a walk to the post office. I don't, know, I don't know how to work that. So, But anyway, I went for a walk to the post office, and when I was going past the bank, my legs were killing me. My hips were hitting me. I, I thought, I'm not going to make it, so I'm going to go ahead and walk to the post office, put my mail in, then I'm going to come back and sit on the library steps. It was about 8 o'clock in the morning. And when I got there, there was a man sitting there, and I started talking to him. Didn't recognize him, but I knew him after we talked. But he was sitting there. He's an alcoholic. Uh, he graduated with my daughter and everything. And uh, his mother just passed away recently. His brother was murdered there in Crothersville several years ago. But anyway, uh, when I finally figured out through his sunglasses who he was, uh, I talked to him, and I said, are you doing okay? And he said, yeah. He said, I'm, uh, I'm uh, addicted to alcohol and everything, but you know, I talked to him and uh, told him his life would be better living for God than not living for God. I said, you know, life is hard and you've had some struggles in your life, some really major ones, but I said, uh, you need to praise God. You need to turn your life over. God can help you with this disease you've got. And it is a disease. A disease. But anyway, I, uh, I, I talked to him. But all the way home, I thought, now, it's amazing because nobody was out on the streets. And that boy was sitting there when I turned around and walked back across the highway and stuff. He was sitting there. So anyway, I, I just thought it was so awesome because I never get to go anywhere anymore. I'm, I stay home all the time. But I, I'm used to, I could praise God and talk to people about God. But, uh, you know, that, that day I was so pleased that I got to say something to somebody that really, really needed it. Amen. And I just felt like God used me for that guy. It may not go anywhere, but he's going to think about that eventually. But anyway, that's mine. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, sister. Okay. Birthdays and anniversaries for the month of August. Gavin, did you have a birthday this month? Yes. All right. If you'll put a little something in the bank, or the church building, and then birthdays on this side and anniversaries on that side. You got a birthday this month? Yes. All right. Are you still having birthdays? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Come on down. Slow but sure. Slow but sure. Amen. And let's happy birthday to all of you and let us sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. And many more. All right. Amen. And y'all had an anniversary. When was your anniversary this the month? The 17th. The 17th. Um, this is always dangerous. How many years? No, 26. 26. You got it right. <laughs> okay. Only two dates you got to remember in your life. Okay. Your anniversary and her birthday. <laughs> Only two days. Everything else is self-explanatory. Christmas, Thanksgiving. Your own birthday. Your own Just, birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, God bless you. Happy anniversary to you. And many more. All right. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Let us all stand. Yeah, just to please him, I'll use it. Uh, to the lady that said she couldn't go anyplace, I have some health problems, and I quite often don't get to church, too. 
But if you're prayed up and ready, you'll be surprised where all the Lord can use you. I've had a, a spectrum man come into my house one day, and when he got unloading his cares on me, I said, would you like to have a word of prayer? And he said, amen, and I prayed with him, and that's happened more times than one. So I'm almost 87. I'm just 11 months older, younger than Beulah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> so just so try to keep yourself prayed up because the Lord can use us wherever we are. Just remember that. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Let us go forward from here. Come and join the ring. 